Hello viewers and welcome to my guide for how to defend in Forza 6. Now this is a subject that isn't really spoken about very much in Forza, for whatever reason. Most of the time it isn't necessary, but perhaps I'll go through a couple of ways that you can um, go about defending in the game. So the first one I'm going to go through, or the first tip I'll go through is looking at these distance markings on the left hand side of the screen. I recommend turning these on always. So if someone is within about 30 feet of you, uh, they're going to be very close. So if I do look behind there, as you can see, the guy behind is less than 30 feet, which is obviously very close, as you can see. If someone is between about 50 and 100 feet, that normally is uh, too far to overtake, depending on the corner, of course, and if they've got the momentum on you. But normally above, above 50, and certainly above 100 feet, you should be safe. So... In this instance, I am um, only about 30 feet away from the guy in second. He actually makes a mistake there, uh, even though I went wide. Um, so that's the reason why I went defensive into that first turn there, is because he was less than 30 feet away. That is well within range for him to go for an overtake. And as you can see, as a result of that, um, I, I keep the lead, uh, mainly because I put him in a very hard position to get past. So going around the Gunasake here in the Super Trofeo, into this corner, um, again he's actually very close again, as you can see, 80 feet. But um, as I said just now, that isn't quite close enough to be overtaken. Another thing is that this corner doesn't have a very long braking zone, so it's very hard for him to actually get alongside. On the exit, this is something I like to do. Look at the distance marking there, it's going up from 74 feet to about 78. This is in slow motion. So at, on the exit there, you can tell that you're actually getting away from the from your opponent. I do that pretty much on every corner. I always look there on the distance markings to see if I'm getting away or if the guy behind me is closing in. That way I know, without having to look behind, that um, you know that he's going to probably go for a move at the next corner. Uh, so it's not always best to look behind because for that half a second that you look behind... You know, you're not looking. You're not looking at the apex. You're not looking where you're turning in. You're not looking at the braking zones. Um, so for this corner, he's 27 feet away. So you're asking, um, that's that's close enough. So why you're not why you're not blocking for this left hander? Um, I briefly touched on it just a moment ago. Um, the best overtaking opportunities are corners with long braking zones, and especially from high speeds down to low speeds. Uh, so that corner back there barely has a braking zone. So there's a little chance that he can get alongside without a breaking zone. This corner here has a breaking zone, so if he was a lot closer, he could have gone up the inside. Um, and turn one has a long breaking zone. Uh, but as I look behind there, um, he's gone over 100 feet away, so I don't actually have to block now going into this first turn. So I go over to the right-hand side, which is the normal racing line, instead of the left-hand side, which would be the defensive line. And as you can see, take a normal racing line through there. So once you know that you don't have to block, just take the proper racing line fully out to the side of the circuit. You know, don't take a half-hearted defensive line. Um, just choose one or the other. If, you, if you're going to defend, defend fully on the inside. If you're not going to defend, you know, go and take the proper racing line to maximise your speed. Because if you don't take the proper racing line, the other guy will, and then he'll just catch up with you on the exit and probably get past you into the next turn. So coming through here, he's actually still very close, and within about 40 feet there but again this corner here doesn't have a very long braking zone but on the exit I'm going to look at the distance meter here and I'm actually um, getting reeled in uh, ever so slightly so I'm going to turn across but at this point here you can see that his uh, front end of his car is actually beyond the back of my car so he's actually partially alongside so at this point I can't turn across him because that's going to cause an accident so as soon as someone is partially alongside you that's that's it, you can't turn across them anymore. So another example of that here is at uh, Bathurst. So I'm going to um, move my opponent over to the wall as much as possible, but that's as far as you can go. You can't push them into the wall. So you can see here, um, back at Laguna Seca, don't quite push him into the wall. Go, go as far as I can without actually pushing him into the wall. So just about managing to keep my position there. Uh, some For some reason, he sort of bailed out on the brakes managed to get back past him so through this section once again he's still very very close I'm still glancing at that distance uh, marking on the left hand side and into this one look behind he's very close so I cover the inside he forces him to the outside we make a bit of contact there 
Um, a bit of a disagreement on when to turn into the corner, but um, we both get through okay. So now this is very interesting. He's on my outside. Uh, so at this point, I just want to uh, get on the brakes nice and early. There's actually no point in uh, trying to outbreak him when you're on the inside. If you're on the inside, you have complete control of the corner. So we're going to slow this down here to go through exactly what I'm doing. So keep on the brakes, uh, keep on the inside line, and then about halfway through the turn, um, at this point here, you can see that he's still on the outside and he has a chance of going around my outside. So this is a tactic I use in this situation. When someone's on my outside, I accelerate into the gap uh, so that I'm in front of them and not beside them. So at this point here, I'm now in front of him and he actually taps the back of me. Um, so once you do that, once you get in front of them, um, it really forces them the very long way round or it forces them to go into the back of you at which point you've kept your position. So that's actually quite a clever tactic. Once they're alongside, accelerate into the gap, get in front of them halfway around the corner, then there's nothing they can do really, apart from driving to the back of you. And if you can control the slide, then you're fine, you've got your position still. And that can uh, really help. Something I've noticed in racing, so if you lose a position, um, you really put yourself in a position to lose more positions. Whereas if you keep your position, um, and you really do help your chances of winning this race a lot more. Because imagine if I had gone down to second there, there's a very good chance the third and fourth might have got past me as well. But as long as I keep that first position, I'm really going to give myself a much better chance of winning. Especially because this guy behind me is very quick. If he gets past me, there's a very good chance he'll get away. Um, I will go through in a moment though when it is best to defend and which sort of situations you should and shouldn't defend in. So coming into the last turn on lap 3, We've successfully defended for three laps. You don't actually get very many races like this, but in the Pinnacle League, which th uh, which this is, you will get these from time to time. So going into turn one, looking behind, he's very close. Now, you don't want to go fully to the left if you're blocking. So as you can see here, I leave about half a car whip on the inside. You don't want to go fully to the left because that's just wasting space. You might as well just give yourself half a car length, just enough that he can't go up the inside, basically. So into turn one, try and park it on the apex. This is another technique I use. Keep it very close on the inside. He does actually try to get up the inside here, but there's just not enough space because, as you can see, he's actually four wheels off the circuit. So I actually force him into quite a um, hard manoeuvre there. So this is another example of parking it on the apex. Go into the final turn at Long Beach. Just hold it on the inside. There's nowhere he can go um, in that situation. He can't go up the inside because there's no space. The only option he has is to go into the back of me or go ex the extremely long way round around the whole outside, which is just not going to happen. So in that situation when you're on the inside, don't outbreak yourself. Get on the brakes nice and early. Keep the car on the very inside, um, which gives them absolutely no opportunity to, uh, opportunity to do a cut back. It also makes them go the very long way round around the outside. So... I mentioned just now about when you should and shouldn't um, do a lot of blocking. I would say in a normal hopper, you don't really need to block all that much. I'm doing a lot of blocking here because this is a pinnacle league race with very good drivers. Now when you're with very good drivers, they're going to have a better understanding of blocking and they're going to be more um, understanding of what you're doing. If you're going to be driving in a normal hopper, we all know that normal hoppers are full of you know, idiots and shit drivers who just, they'll just ram you out of the way basically. So there's little point of actually doing it. Maybe on the last corner of the last lap you can do it. But other than that, I wouldn't actually recommend blocking all that much in a normal hopper. Depends who you're with. If you know that the other person is a very good driver, then it's uh, it's more advisable to block and, and use defending. In this situation, I've used blocking very cleverly to get myself a win. I don't think I was the quickest car there. I think that guy behind me was quicker. And he probably would have won by quite a way if he had got past. But that's just a quick video on how I think you should block, when you should and shouldn't block. And if you want more tips and advice, of course, just uh, leave a comment down below and I should be able to get back to you on more advice. So that's going to be it for me. I thank you very much for watching this one, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.